Well, uh, Scott, good to be with you. It's an honor and privilege to chat with you today. Uh, tell us just a little bit about your background uh, in New Skin. I'd love to, and couldn't be more happy to have you here with us as well. Thank you. So, my name is Scott Ferguson, and I'm a senior scientist here at Pharmanex. And I head a division called Consumer Technology. And my team's job is to develop devices that help our distributors demonstrate the power of our products. One example of our, our initiatives is this biophotonic scanner. We've been working on that for the last 12 years. We also do things like galvanic spa and a lot of the genetic work as well. But to tell you a little bit about myself, I got my graduate degree at Washington University in St. Louis in the field of molecular biology and genetics. My undergraduate work was done here in Utah, at the University of Utah in biochemistry. Right out of college, I decided to go and work at the Huntsman Cancer Institute. And I worked there for a number of years studying prostate cancer and the mechanisms that are involved as we males, as we age, and the associated problems that happen with our prostate. But I've been here at New Skin for 11 years now. And I'm so excited to be part of this team because when I found that a team that was applying the pharmaceutical principles of clinical substantiation, double-blind clinical studies, and pure toxicology and pharmacokinetic research in dietary supplements, I was really impressed with the abilities to develop products that have tremendous impact in, in, uh, in human health. So this is the biophotonic scanner, third generation. Mm -hmm. So BAS, that takes me back 12 years ago to the University of Utah, when Dr. Werner Gellerman and a team of physicists invented a technique that could actually measure the level of specific antioxidants in your skin. The technique is called resonant Raman spectroscopy. And this technique, at the time, the equipment filled a room that was 10 feet by 10 feet. And over the past 12 years, we've refined this and miniaturized this to where we're at today with the third generation. Now the first generation was launched 10 years ago in the year 2003. And that device was portable, yet it was still quite heavy, almost 20 pounds, and it was hard to use. And over the years, we've reduced, we've miniaturized the technology so that now it's quite portable, you can carry this on a bus, it's battery operated, the scans are only 30 seconds. It's a real nice tool for helping people understand the level of these antioxidants in their skin. And let me tell you a little bit how it works. So I'm sure when you were taking your chemistry classes, you learned a lot about spectroscopy. There's NIR and FTIR, different techniques where you shine light on organic molecules, and those molecules will either absorb some of the light or actually shift the wavelength of that light. And what happens is there's the chemical bonds within those molecules when that light is absorbed, those bonds begin to stretch and rotate and twist. And all of that allows us to probe the chemical structure of those molecules. In Raman spectroscopy, we send light in at a single wavelength. And in this case, it's blue. The light that goes in is exactly 488 nanometers. It appears blue to the human eye. And when blue light comes in contact with most compounds, it just bounces right off. But with carotenoids, the carotenoids are unique. The carotenoids will absorb that blue energy, and the bonds will start to stretch and rotate and vibrate. And then the carotenoid will actually re-emit a new photon at a different wavelength. And in this case, the carotenoids, this large family of antioxidants, will always re-emit light shifted to 510 nanometers. So that appears green to our human eye. So that is specific to carotenoids, that shift in the wavelength? It's a chemical fingerprint. If we measure the amount of shifted light at 510 nanometers, that is proportional to the level of antioxidants in our skin. Okay, all right. So the device is a very sensitive detector of light that's been shifted. So let's take you and I. Let's say that you have a very healthy diet, you're vegetarian, you eat 7 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. I, maybe I'm a typical American, I eat one at best. Your score is likely to be very high because you're ingesting those compounds. And let's say, just for example, your score is 80,000. And me, because I'm not eating very much, let's just say hypothetically that my score is only 10,000. That means that you have eight times the level 
of these carotenoid molecules in your skin compared to me. So how does the scoring compare to the actual value that we are used to in milligrams per cent? Right. So every unit that's discovered needs to be defined. For example, before the, the thermometer was invented, you could make a glass tube, fill it with mercury, and as the temperature got hotter and colder, it would rise and lower. And yet it wasn't until we put those little gradations in the Celsius or Fahrenheit scales that we add a, a unit to that. Right. The same thing's true here. Before this technique, the unit didn't exist. The score is simply the height of the peak on the spectrophotometer. So the more light that comes back, the higher the peak goes. And so it is a unitless measure, but it's still proportional to the concentration of carotenoids. Unitless meaning that there is no micrograms per mil or milligrams per cubic centimeter. It's simply the peak height on a spectrophotometer, uh, which represents the amount of light that's coming back. Okay. Now, let me ask you another very important question that is a scientific correlation with uh, serum blood levels and or skin biopsy levels. Have you done studies on that with the Certainly. Robin spectroscopy? Yeah, that's one of the first things that we wanted to do to validate this instrument's uh, the usefulness of this technique. And so what we did is we brought in a number of subjects and took blood draws. We took it two days a week for a period of four weeks. And we had 30 subjects in our, in our, uh, in our study. And what we did, at the same time they came in for their blood draws, we also measured them using the biophotonic scanner. And with those blood draws, we measured levels of every antioxidant that we could measure. So vitamin E, selenium, vitamin C, of course the carotenoids, and so on. And what we did then is we looked at the correlation between the scanner score and first the level of carotenoids. And the correlation was beautiful. It was, it was almost perfect. Mm. Then we looked not only beyond carotenoids, but we also looked at all the antioxidants in total, which represents the strength of our antioxidant defense network, or all those antioxidants in our body that are defending ourselves against free radicals. And again, the correlation was very strong. The R squared value was 0.8. Mm. And so we're very confident that the score, as measured, is correlative to the total level of carotenoids as measured in blood serum. Serum levels vary according to what you consumed uh, maybe even half an hour ago, whereas the, uh, the carotenoid score in the palm of the hand will be stable, just like the hemoglobin A1c in diabetes that measures the serum level for the blood sugar for the past two months or so. So is that the same here? The palmar aspect of the carotenoids is this much more stable value as compared to the serum? That's right. So, so when you measure your carotenoid levels in serum, it's certainly reflective of what your diet has been over the past few days. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you've had a horrible diet, but in the last three days you turned it all around and you ate 12 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And you take your fasting serum carotenoid levels, you're certainly going to be high because it's going to be reflective of what you had over the last few days. But that's not reflective of, of you and your diet overall. That's where the power of the biophotonic scanner comes in. When we measure carotenoids in human skin, it's this outer layer called the stratum corneum. And as you know, Bath, that's a dead layer of tissue that we all see as we look at ourselves. Now these cells, though, they were born or they were uh, developed deep in the tissue. Of course, there's multiple layers of the skin. There's the dermis and the epidermis. And so when these cells were formed, they were deep in the tissue and they were exposed to our blood supply. And they've been exposed to that rich nutrient blood supply of ours for over the last, say, two to four months. And so when I'm measuring the level of carotenoids in this outermost layer, the stratum corneum, it's kind of like CSI. You're, you're looking at the level and it's reflective of what's been going on in your diet over the last between two and four months, even longer, six, eight months. Mm -hmm. So the level on your skin is a better indicator of what you've been doing from a dietary perspective long term than serum. So you cannot alter the level in the Palmer aspect by drinking a glass of V8 juice half an hour before the test? Not at all. Okay, but it'll change the serum level. It will. So there, there is the correlation. Uh, between the two, or non-correlation between the two. 
Scott, uh, the science behind that is uh, fascinating. So, what, are, what is your experience with the actual usage of this across the population from babies to geriatrics? That's been the most exciting part of our research. Yeah. Over the last 12 years, we've scanned as a company over 17 million people around the world. Wow. And personally, I've scanned tens of thousands of people mm -hmm. on my own. And it's been so interesting to see people come in, talk about their diet and exercise and uh, supplement habits, and, and have them get measured and, and better understand what's going on in their body. And it's really fun because you'll almost always have a husband and wife come in, and one or the other will have a very healthy diet, where the other one's not so much. And usually you can see there's a lot of tension in that couple because they kind of thought about one person suggesting maybe the other needs to have a better diet. And then when they come in and one scores really high and the other scores really low, you always see that validation in the, the one person's uh, face that, yeah, you see, everything that I've been doing is reflecting in my body. And certainly we're measuring skin levels, but of course these carotenoids are used in other tissues as well. They're he found heavily in your heart, your brain, your lungs, your eyes, all of your tissues. And so you can see how important it is to have that healthy diet where you're getting those antioxidants to give that protection against free radicals. Now, it's also fun, you get the families and they'll have teenagers or young children who invariably score extremely low. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised if teenagers ever get over 20,000. Most of the time, they're less than 10,000. And of course, they look at their mom and their mom's like, see, I told you, you have to eat those fruits and vegetables. But you'll be surprised about the highest group of people I ever scan. You know, most people think that would be vegetarians. And well, certainly vegetarians do score high. The highest population, bar none, are young babies. Just as they transition off of formula and they start eating strained peas and strained carrots all day. Right? They have that nice healthy glow. It's not, it's not at all surprising to see them come in over 100,000 because they're eating all that, those antioxidants. And we know that's certainly a good thing for those babies. That's what dietitians have recommended, to eat all those healthy fruits and vegetables. And it's reflected in the score that we see. Okay, let me ask you another question, and that is the uh, difference in uh, ethnicity. Is there any difference between uh, Afro-Americans, uh, Caucasians, Hispanics, Asians, and so on? You know, as I mentioned, we've scanned over 17 million people around the globe. And at my computer, I can pull up the data stratified in any way I want. And we've looked at this data right, left, up, and down, and we've never seen an ethnic factor. Mm. Uh, it always turns out to be dietary. Now there's just one exception to that rule, and it's always surprised us a little bit, is that whenever we look at global populations, it's not the color of the skin, but the, the Korean population always scans higher, on average. Mm. It's always about 15,000 higher. We couldn't figure that out at first. It kimchi. Really... It's all about kimchi. <laughs> exactly. And so we ended up asking some questions into the questionnaire in Korea. We wanted to know about kimchi usage. And we found, of course, that in Korea that's very high. And we started to evaluate that food source. They use a lot of spices that are very high in carotenoids. So that, that red sauce that they, they find on the kimchi is just enriched with carotenoids. And so their dietary level of these antioxidants are very high compared to the rest of the world. And we think that explains why. Yeah. When individuals from Korea say that they don't eat kimchi, then their scores fall in with the rest of the globe. That's interesting. Well, Scott, uh, that's uh, very exciting. Is there another version coming up in the future, which is uh, faster, shorter, quicker, and so on? Oh, bass. We're just launching this this <laughs> month. But, of course, from our perspective at NewSkin, we've been developing this technology for over 12 years now. Yeah, and we're not about to stop now. Right. Well, that's awesome. Well, we need to continue to have these innovations from NewSkin turned out year after year and uh, change the world. We need you guys. You know, it's just awesome to work with you and uh, learn these uh, technologies uh, coming out of NewSkin. Uh, that helps the whole world. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you, Beth. Thank you.